As taught in physics, the classic focusing lens comprises two spherical faces, both bowing outward. This is simple, but does not produce a good focus. I have written the Octopus program to illustrate the problem and its solution. This diagram traces the path of a light beam coming from the left as it passes through a classic lens. The vertical line represents the beam wavefront. This horizontal line is the lens axis. Each blue line traces the path from a selected point of the wavefront. The path goes from air into glass at the ingress face and back into air at the egress face. Light travels faster in air than in glass, and the difference causes the path to bend at each transition. The greater the incident angle, the greater the bend. If all of the paths come together at one point on the lens axis, the focus is perfect. The 55% focus deviation indicated by this triangle is horrible. This is not really a classic lens. It's too fat. Just by making the lens thinner, the focus improves. As the thickness approaches zero, the focal length approaches the radius of the circles that define the lens faces, as predicted by the classic lens maker's formula. The 1% focus deviation is much better than the 55%, but it is not perfect and it is achieved by making the lens 133 times thinner than the focal length. This is not a practical lens. The same 1% focus deviation can also be achieved just by reducing the width of the lens face. This is a practical lens, but still not ideal. Reducing the width increases the required precision, and therefore the difficulty and cost to manufacture. It generally constrains our design options and specifically does nothing to help make shorter focal lengths. And it still can't produce a perfect focus. Optics manufacturers correct the focal problems inherent in spherical lenses by stacking lenses with complementary errors, but it would be more efficient to just avoid errors in the first place. Examining the individual paths reveals that the points closer to the lens axis focus at a longer distance than the ones further away. The lens curve is too strong toward its edges, increasing the beam's incident angle and the amount that it bends. So why not use a parabola, whose curve does the opposite? In fact, its curve weakens too much, causing the focal length to increase as we move away from the axis. We need something in between a circle and a parabola. The solution is to use an ellipse, whose curve can be adjusted between these two extremes. The eccentricity of an ellipse tells the relative strength of the curves at its vertices. Here, the lens faces act just like circles, but the program considers them ellipses of eccentricity zero. Increasing the y dimension of the ingress ellipse flattens the curve near the x vertex, while increasing it toward the y vertex. The eccentricity increases. Focus deviation increases. This has the same problem as a circle, only worse. If we go in the opposite direction, passing through the circle and continuing, the deviation steadily decreases to the minimum that still exhibits the crossover pattern characteristic of a circle. Continuing in the same direction, the paths uncross at the curve tends toward parabolic. This demonstrates that an ellipse can cover the entire curve range between circle and parabola. However, we are still not seeing a very good focus anywhere in this range. That is due to the circular egress face undoing the best efforts of the ingress ellipse. If both are ellipses, we can get a good focus at nearly any length. In fact, a single ellipse face alone, for example, a lens fused to the end of an optical fiber, can achieve perfect focus. These green lines represent the paths without the second face refraction. They focus perfectly at the red dot, which shows the location of one of the ellipse's two foci. The ellipse's eccentricity, 0.667, is exactly the ratio of the speed of light in glass versus air. We can prove mathematically that this will always produce a perfect focus at that point. The curve shaping power of ellipse increases the utility of alternate configurations. For example, both faces of this lens now bow outwards and the focus is not very good. Flipping the egress face to bow inward improves the focus at the expense of a longer focal length. A little tweaking reduces the focal length while achieving a perfect focus. This configuration affords the most freedom to achieve good focus with a wide range of lens parameters. 
It also has the lowest light loss due to internal reflection at the egress face. With a little more tweaking, we can make the single and two-face paths coincide. This can happen only if every path hits the egress face at a right angle. Then there is no bending and no reflection. For nearly any single-face focus, there is one egress ellipse that produces a coincidental two-face focus.